Hello and welcome to The 51%, a show about women reshaping our world. I'm Claire Pride, filling in for Annette Young. Coming up, we have a report on a Congolese surgeon who, after helping thousands of rape victims, is the subject of a documentary called The Man Who Mends Women. Violence may have plunged in recent years in Ciudad Juarez, but many people in the Mexican city still live in fear, particularly women. France 24 sent a team there to investigate. And rock camps in Australia just for girls aim to empower young women and boost their self-esteem. The Democratic Republic of Congo has been described as one of the worst places on earth for women, and that's because the use of rape as a weapon of war has blighted thousands of lives there. Lives, a Congolese surgeon, has been trying to help put back together. His name is Dennis Mukwege, and he's the subject of a documentary that's just been released here in France. Mukwege has received many prizes for helping rape victims, and he's spoken out against perpetrators going unpunished. Solange Mougin reports. A moment of song and prayer, a reprieve from the violence that surrounds them or the memories of it. On Sundays, Dr. Dennis McWege comes to this church, where the acclaimed surgeon moonlights as a pastor. He's here to reflect and gather strength in his fight to end rampant sexual violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The main message we must impart is that of peace because it is our right. The recipient of multiple international prizes, including the 2014 Sakharov Award, Mukwege explained to the EU Parliament, as seen in this excerpt of a documentary about the surgeon, why he works so tirelessly to help victims of gang rape and mutilation. I identify every woman raped with my wife. I identify every mother raped with my own mother. Every child raped with my children. An empathy and an intolerance for injustice that helped turn the Congolese gynecologist into one of the world's most admired doctors. The director of the documentary, The Man Who Mends Women, says Mukwege is on par with Nelson Mandela and Dr. Martin Luther King. He really is the pride and joy of an entire continent. First, because of his great humanity as a doctor, there's also his empathy for victims, his quality as a surgeon. But above all, it's because he dared to speak the truth, that rape is being used as a weapon of war. According to a 2011 study, up to 1.8 million Congolese women have been raped. Mukwege explained why militias and soldiers use sexual violence as a means to destroy communities. There are people who want to get rich, to get their hands on Congolese tin oxide, coltran and gold. And to do that, they kill, they rape and they destroy women. Mukwege's outspokenness and work have not pleased everyone. He narrowly escaped an assassination attempt in 2012, and he now lives under UN guard. But he continues his fight to surgically and thus emotionally help women move beyond indescribable trauma. Turning our attention to Ciudad Juarez, the Pope's last stop on his visit to Mexico. Not long ago, the border town was the homicide capital of the world. It's also been in the headlines over the years because of hundreds of unsolved murders of women, many of them factory workers who simply disappeared. Now, here's an extract of France 24's show, Revisited. Ciudad Juarez, a prime spot for prostitution. Its location right by the border pulls in Americans hungry for less regulated sexual services. It's also the spot where factories called maquiladoras flourished in the 90s. There, poorly paid hands would assemble all sorts of items for the American market. Many of the disappeared women worked in factories like this. My daughter was heading here to the center, but after she went out, I never heard from her again. But right in the centre of town, there are loads of police keeping an eye on things, aren't there? No, it looks like it, but no. The centre of town is a dangerous zone for young women. Most of them disappeared right around here, in broad daylight. 
and yet. What are we doing here? Looking for your daughters? Sir, were you aware of this problem? No, truthfully, I'm not. There are people who pretend not to know about the problem, even though there are these posters everywhere and the girls' faces are constantly on the news. Is it indifference? It's fear. Fear. Have you been able to find any of the girls with these posters? No, unfortunately no one yet. Susana is one of around 1,500 mothers who aren't searching anymore. Her daughter, Lupita, was found dead in 2012. The investigation showed that the 17-year-old girl had spent months after her kidnapping in this sordid place, the Hotel Verde. This is where a criminal network exploited underage girls for years, and it's just four blocks away from the town hall. Lots of people have spoken out about this, people I didn't even know, so she's right here. You can see her at night, but she doesn't look good. She's drugged, and they abuse and shout at her. Lots of parents had heard the rumors going around about this hotel and alerted authorities. I came here with the police to look for my daughter. They just asked the receptionist, have you seen her? The receptionist didn't even look at the photo. She just said she didn't know anything. Over the 20 years of unresolved crimes, the family's persistence for justice has created some martyrs. In 2008, 16-year-old Ruby Marisol Escobedo was murdered. The investigation went nowhere, so her mother Maricela took matters into her own hands. She tracked down the daughter's boyfriend, certain he was the killer. Police arrested him, he confessed, and told them where to find the body. Despite all that, a few months later, he was freed for lack of evidence. Maricela appealed and he was declared guilty, but he was already on the run and they never found him. At the end of 2010, Maricela began a sit-in outside the government palace. A few days in, she was gunned down by an unidentified man. It was all caught on surveillance cameras. We now know who was behind all these murders. The Aztecas, a criminal network with over 5,000 members that deals in drugs, guns and human beings. Last July, five men were charged with being part of the ring which killed the women found in the desert. After 25 years and hundreds of deaths, they are the first to be charged with organized femicide. The authorities nicknamed it the trial of the century. Now, it's common knowledge that singing and rocking out can make you feel good. But did you know that it can also do wonders for your self-confidence? And that's why Girls Rock Australia organises rock camps just for girls. The first one was held in Canberra and a Grammy-nominated singer made an appearance. Haxi mayers belkin reports. Rock music is still, for the most part, a man's world. But not so in Canberra, Australia, where a girls only rock camp inspired by similar projects in the US is making waves. Girls Rock's mission is to empower young women one song at a time. For many of the rockers to be aged between 10 and 17, this is their first experience of creating music. They haven't met each other from the beginning of the week and then they start, they form a band, they write an original song, we know no covers here, they write an original song and by the end of the week on Saturday they'll be able to perform it. A daunting prospect, but it's a challenge these girls are determined to rise to. Yeah, I was pretty nervous, but it built up my confidence doing it. It's good um, learning and doing different workshops on how to create your own songs and perform them on the weekend and write music to them. Key to the project's success, mentoring from women who've already earned their rock star credentials. For 28-year-old Grammy-nominated musician Courtney Barnett, the school is a fun way to banish inhibitions. I think it's such a cool concept, you know. I, I wish something like this existed when I was young and, and getting into guitar. The music's about finding a way to express yourself and have fun and build confidence, and that's what it's about. The Canberra Rock Camp is the first of its kind in Australia. Its founders are planning to roll out the project nationwide 
in the coming months. Now, some of the girls at that rock camp might one day use one of these. This guitar was designed by a woman for women. St Vincent, whose real name is Annie Clark, found standard guitars heavy and unflattering. So the musician designed one that weighs three and a bit kilos and shows off a woman's waist. And St Vincent says it's sympathetic to the female form. Well, that's it for now. If you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, you can head to our Facebook page or send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for all your feedback so far. Do keep those comments coming in and I hope you'll join us again next week.